So in last week's video, I shared my strategy that I've been using for the past two months or eight weeks or four fortnights that have made my eBay sales double, if not triple from just a few months ago. And it keeps working. So I'm certainly going to keep doing it, but it prompted a lot of great questions and comments from you guys out there. And a lot of great comments and questions from resellers that I certainly want to consider in my own strategy. But I also want to get out to one of my favorite thrift stores because I felt a little bit sad last week that we didn't go out at a thrift store together. So we're going to go do some thrifty speaking in this video. I appreciate you guys being here. So let's hop to it. So if you haven't seen last week's video, you're probably WTF in. What? What the? But you can go back and watch it, or this is the quick summary. So basically what I do is I run weekend sales, either Friday through Sunday night or Saturday through Sunday night on basically my entire inventory, my entire store. And I do different tiered discounts or 10%, 15%, 18%. And obviously why I do that is it attracts more buyers to my lower prices. However, also I have a second goal in mind. Come Monday morning when all my sales are over and all my prices are back to their full price without a sale price, I now have multiple people that are now watching items. That's where this magic has really been working for me because weekend sales, a lot of people are already shopping inherently on Saturdays and Sundays, even without the sale prices. However, the sale prices attract new people. And even if they don't buy that weekend, now that I have their attention, come during the week, I can send them sales and improve my sales during the week. So let's just take a look and see what I'm talking about. Okay, so what we're looking at here is now it's Monday morning. I have listings eligible to send offers. I have 80 here and 80 people is a lot. As you can see, I only have 192 active listings. So more than a third of my entire store people are watching. So this is what it looks like. This is the question that people are asking about, like what, what kind of sale do I go back and offer on Monday morning? What is the percentage that I give? So that's all depends on the context of the item. I don't have a single answer for that question. It really depends on how long I've had these particular items to know uh, and also how much I have invested in the item, because obviously if I have, if margins are slim on a particular item, I can only do so much of a sale price on that particular item. But that's for you to figure out for your own inventory. Uh, I'll just kind of go through this, this makeshift plush Kevin here. I've had this for a couple months and I only have about 10 to $15 into it. Um, I probably should know that exact number, but I don't. And uh, so this, I have a lot of margin to work with here. And being that if I only had this particular item for um, say a couple weeks, I'm less inclined to give a bigger sale price, obviously. Being at a hundred bucks, I have a large margin and uh, I've had this for a couple months. I'm inclined to do like a 20 to 25% sale on that one, uh, 75 or $80 on that one. Same with this thing below the Kipling bag. Uh, it's 25 bucks. I've had this for a little over six weeks, maybe eight weeks. Um, and I have about $5 in this. So I don't want to necessarily do 25% on this. I would still make money at 25%, but I'll probably do more like a 20% discount. These iron, uh, these iron shorts, it's the end of the fall season or we're headed into fall, I should say. It's the end of the summer. So there's going to be in theory, less people buying shorts. So I can either pack this up and, and, you know, put it in storage until the spring, but I'm more inclined just because of the amount of stuff I have to just get rid of these and blow these out. I only have $2 into these shorts, so I have a lot of margin. Even if I do 25% off of these things, I still have some margin to work with. I'm still making money. Basically what I'm gonna go through is just scroll through and I'm gonna tick the boxes for anything that I wanna do, say a 25% sale on. And I'm not gonna go through the whole list because 80 is a lot, uh, but I don't have much money in all of these things. I have room to move 25% in a lot of this stuff um, is perfectly reasonable. And I'm just gonna go through and click click a few. Uh, that looks good enough. So at the top here, then I'm just gonna go to send offers on these six items, and I'm just gonna hit 25%. And you'll see the popul what populates over here on the side is just your new offer price. Um, and this goes out to anybody who's currently watching, whether it's one person or 10 people, however many people are watching these particular items, they're all gonna get this same email once in a while, I change this particular message here. This is just the generic eBay's response. Here's your chance to get this item at a great price. On occasion, I might change it to something like um, uh, last chance at this fantastic sale. Only one left. First come, 
first serve. Kind of give that idea that uh, you know these limited quantity these these limited uh, quantities might prompt some more action. Maybe not. So I don't even know how many people really look at that particular message. Just kind of look at the price and see if they want to pay it. Uh, you can do where it says allow counter offers down here. Uh, you can certainly I've done that in the past. But I don't like to do that when I'm sending these sales out because I'm already sending such a good price out. If I do this at counter offers, almost everybody's going to counter offer. Uh, at least that's the, the the experience that I've had. So when I'm sending 25% off this $100 item and it's down to 75, that's a really good price already. So I'd rather not. Um, so I'm just going to send this, make sure all these prices look reasonable and then I'll still make money. I'm not going to lose money on these things. And then I'm just going to send. And I'm going to do that process for everything and sometimes i'll send sometimes it's if it's a brand new item for example i mean brand new as in brand new uh, item still like wrapped in package i mean brand new from the standpoint of i just listed it in the past couple days because i'm less inclined to give a percentage off there a lot of this stuff looks like it's stuff that's been uh on the site for a long like these shoes are relatively new this nike bag this osprey bag these are all new uh in this past week listing so yeah i'll do i'll do uh, that and I'll, I'll do the lowest like a five to ten percentage off here and I'm going to send that off into the ethers and hope people respond and buy the item. So that's basically all I'm going to do is go through each particular item is going to have a different sales price. So I don't have a, a direct answer when people are asking me what kind of percentage I give off. That's completely within the context of the individual item. And we're off to Second Life, one of my favorite thrift stores of all time. As soon as I get in there, I find this skeleton zombie rotting corpse thing with skulls hanging down. Of course, I bought it for two bucks. If you're not buying this, are you even Halloweening, bro? One of my favorite things in all thrift stores and lawn sales, I go straight to the toys and board game sections. One of my favorite things to sell, I find this gravity maze. I've sold this game so many times. They're asking three bucks. It sells for a little bit under 20 bucks on Amazon. So I'm going to be making about six bucks on this. If you're not familiar with Amazon FBA, check it out. Uh, I use it exclusively for used board games. Quelf, this is another game I find. Although I've sold hundreds of copies of this. I actually did a video a couple months back. This game has made me over $7,000 alone just selling this. This was a little beat up. I put it back on the shelf, but uh, I always find Quelf out in the wilds and uh, you can do pretty good with just that game. I found this uh, expired ink cartridge. I sell expired ink all the time. I'm not scared of it. However, this was five years expired. I try to stick within the last three years, so I did put this back, but uh, keep an eye out for expired ink, and you can certainly still sell it and make money on it. Panasonic, these old phones, they can actually still do pretty good. I'm not sure if people are aware of that or not. They're only asking five bucks, and then you can you should get pretty good deals at thrift stores because they're unaware that people still buy this stuff. And it was brand new in the box, sells for about $65, $60, $70 range. So I think I can get about 60 bucks for this and I'm only paying five. So this is an awesome, awesome score. So keep an eye out for these, these older phone systems. Did get a great question here from a uh, Mr. Alex D. Tucker, who's actually my friend. I'm gonna act like I don't know him. But uh, he has a fantastic YouTube channel. If you're, he's a he's one of those masochists that runs like a hundred mile races. This is all around the world. Check out his check out his channel if you're into into running and adventure. He does adventure uh, traveling channel uh, as well. So he has some some really good content. Because I got him into reselling a little bit too. So um, for for tighter profit margins on the product listings, what do you suggest? Yeah, for for folks out there, the the ten to twenty percent discounts can be a little steep to offer when your when your margins are. Uh, already pretty tight to work with. So I completely understand that. And I don't have a, a great suggestion other than there are some workarounds. There was a gentleman that actually commented that said he sets his prices at about 10% higher than the going rate on eBay and does 15% sales. So I'm not sure if that math is exact, um, but I think you guys all uh, understand what I'm saying. If you set your prices a little bit higher and then um, and then do like a 10 to 15%. With the goal in mind, is you just want people to attract uh, attract to your listing, for people to at least consider the item. And, and that Monday morning, Tuesday morning, after that weekend sale, the point is you just want to be able to offer them a special deal. You're not gonna sell, just as we all know, you're not gonna sell everything just because it's on sale or just because you make a special offer. What this has done for me though, is just uh, attract more people to my prices and being able to send them a exclusive sale that shows up in their email inbox 
that seems to be translating to more sales throughout the week and not just during the weekend. And maybe that's not the best idea. It's certainly an idea, but maybe it's too simplistic or maybe it seems too impractical or too many hoops to jump through to, to actually make this uh, kind of promotional sale work. So uh, it goes without saying to try and when you are out there sourcing, try to avoid the things that you don't have wiggle room on the price. I made a video, if I can find it, I'll link it down in the, the comment section below. But when you're out there sourcing, try to keep in mind that you're making money when you actually buy the item. Obviously, you're not making the physical cash until it hits your bank account or your fancy pockets. But the concept is when you're out there, you have to, you have to keep margins in mind when you're purchasing because say an uh, item becomes suddenly saturated on the market say you buy something for five bucks that you anticipate selling for 15 for example but then suddenly there's an influx of listings of this particular item and some people start being competitive with the prices suddenly the price is 14 or 13 or 12 and now that you have a certain amount into it you can't really adjust your price and so now you can't compete and your item may never sell or it may just sit around for a lot longer than you intended and that five dollars that you invested into it you're not going to get back for a very long time if ever uh, my general rule of thumb obviously is just mine everybody's going to have their own experience and own business models uh, and there's always going to be uh, obviously exceptions to this you'll see exceptions to my own rules on this particular channel when i'm out there shopping but in general if i'm spending five dollars i want to make sure i'm doubling my money if i'm spending ten dollars i don't want to spend ten dollars just to make five dollars on an item i don't want to spend twenty dollars to make ten i always want to do at least whatever i'm spending to at least double uh there are always going to be exceptions what i what i spend ten dollars to make eight dollars and get you know eighteen dollars back sure yes i might do that but it's very rare that i'm going to buy uh, a three dollar item to make one dollar or a twenty five dollar item just to make ten it doesn't uh, it doesn't compute well so so keep that in mind when you're out there shopping and determine what those numbers look like before you if you buy it. just avoid buying it if you don't have margins to move keeping on trend with old technology i found these old dvd r's sell for two bucks not a huge score but i still sell a decent amount of these they sell for about 13 bucks on on amazon again i'm going to double my money i'm going to make about four to five dollars on that and harry potter books this is something i'm not sure if everybody knows about hard books specifically not the soft covers i'm making sure this one looks good the strong binding clean pages and as long as i can get these for two or three bucks you can sell the whole set for 65 to 70 dollars and i do that every so often i just keep buying whenever i find them out in the wilds until i complete a set found these hats a little bit pricier than i want to spend six dollars for these but i did find comps on ebay that recently sold for about 25 bucks for these old uh not old but these new um North Carolina Tar Heels and with basketball season coming up they're usually a po pretty popular basketball team so then I find this Atlanta Braves champion uh, World Series champion and again it's a, it's five bucks a little bit more than I would like to pay but it does sell for roughly 20 bucks with shipping so I'll probably make five to six seven dollars something like that and again another North Carolina hat that I'm picking up for uh, basketball seasons coming up and I do want to highlight this question from rescued goodies is that uh, interesting without your knowing the cost of goods it's impossible to evaluate your efficiency and profits making two hundred dollars on investment of ten dollars certainly sounds good but how many items in that lot proportionally ten dollars never sold at all sold at loss this is a great thing to point out um, it absolutely all does depend because I could go out and sell something for $20,000 and say that, uh, hey guys, I am a master reseller because I sold $20,000 this weekend, uh, but I could have paid $19,900 for it and really have only made $100 or less. Um, so it's definitely a valid point. I, I think that's important to keep in mind for, especially that there's a lot of people that were commenting on, on this, my last video that said they were new to reselling. And I think it's very easy to I don't think it's manipulation on purpose by by folks uh by resellers on on youtube and nobody's out to manipulate anyone else on purpose but it, it can be a little uh it, it can be very tricky when we see other resellers their gross sales uh, versus what the actual profits are it's very uh, keep that in mind that what sometimes when you see somebody selling something for 35 bucks they're not actually putting 35 bucks in their pocket of course you have the cost of goods you have the ebay fees you have shipping costs and various fees and taxes that you might pay on that item um, so just keep that in mind when you don't be don't be lured by the high the high sale prices because that's kind of irrelevant what matters is how much profit you actually make on those so great comment from rescue goodies i do want to highlight that these weekend sales these promotions it's just a small piece of the overall puzzle of your selling account there's a lot of things that you have to be doing in order to make sales i don't want to mislead people and 
and say that you just run magical uh, weekend sales and suddenly you're going to start doubling and triple your sales. There's a lot of other variables that go into place that have to be considered. I know there's a lot of new, new accounts out there. So keep in mind, it's a good idea. What I like to do is, for one thing, keeping the algorithm happy, just like any kind of media or social media platform. Uh, the more you use it, the more algorithm happy it will be. And re eBay will reward you for more activity. And that activity comes in many different forms. But in terms of, of listing things, that's one of the best things that, that really feeds that algorithm hairy beast that's hiding in the closet is just to feed it listings daily. What that number is, I'm not sure if people actually know. It's been said that five listings kind of keeps the algorithm happy. Some people say 10. I'm not sure what it is, but I like to do, I like to kind of ramp it up towards the weekend because most people uh, shop, I think, on the weekend. So I ramp it up. So on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, I keep it relatively light. I do maybe five listings on Monday through Wednesdays. On Thursdays, I start to ramp it up, maybe eight to 10. And then on Friday, Saturday, Sundays, I think I covered all the days at that point. Uh, I really try to dive in and do 15, 20, 25 listings. Obviously, if the, the caveat is you have stuff to list. Obviously, not everybody has uh, 100 items to list in a given week. So, and that's the case, I would focus uh, on a back end, making the back end heavy, meaning Friday, Saturday, Sundays, or even Thursdays. Focus on those days to list your items. If you don't have, if you, if you only have 25 items, say, to list in a given week, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you reward the, the hairy beast algorithm in other ways by changing your prices, end listings, and sell similar listings that acts as a new listing. So if you have to do that, I don't think it's the best option, but it's certainly an option and it's better than doing nothing. Keeping active on eBay in some way just helps keep the algorithm moving. It doesn't have to be strictly listing items. So maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, don't list anything at all. Maybe Thursday, just do two to three to four. And just, just Friday, Saturday, Sundays, try to do maybe the, the five to 10 every Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning. So just do your best with what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have, certainly, but try to keep active on eBay. That's something that I think I do well and why my account and why my sales uh, have been doing so well because I've been so consistent in my listing. So keep that in mind. It's imperative to always be active on eBay. You can't just uh, hope that your weekend sales are going to, to, to blow your account up and fill your fancy pockets with cash.